Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Books Weekly, my Sunday video in which I discuss books that I've either finished from a previous week or read last week or started last week. And the first book is the book that I finished from two weeks ago because as I told you in my one of my la last videos I didn't read much a uh, week before last. So this is a book from two weeks ago, and that's historical fiction, Daniel Dutton, Margaret I. It's a book about Margaret Cavendish, a 17th century duchess, and I already warned you that you will be subjected to some serious Margaret Cavendish gush after I've read the book. So be advised, there comes, here comes the gush. First of all, the book. It's a very small, slim book. It's under 200 pages. So if you expect um, your historical novel being, you know, extensive, uh, picturing the life of Margaret from, from birth to death in, very de in a very detailed manner, this is not the book for you. It's much more an impressionistic, lyrical account. We start in her childhood and we go until her death. Margaret Cavendish died in 1673 when she was 50 years old. But it's an, yeah, it, it's like little snippets of, of impressionistic uh, writing about her life. I, I loved the book. I thought it was really beautiful and it gave me at least a very good idea of Margaret's life and especially um, her, her inner life, her struggle. She was extremely shy, even though she was one of the most... Um, to the outer world, one of the most uh, yeah, extraordinary women in the 17th century. She uh, published books, which was completely not done at the time for a woman. If women wrote then, they did it in, in, in the form of letters and it was circulated among friends if, if they wrote books. But Margaret actually published books and not only uh, poems, um, or more the quote-unquote typical female writing, but she published uh, six books about natural philosophy. So you, you, you see her in, in Daniel Dutton's uh, Margaret I as a woman on, on the one hand very ambitious and very much not conforming to the rules for women at the time, but at the same time she was extremely shy and she was... Uh, intimidated if she had to speak in public. So this, this struggle is, is very beautifully done in the book. Uh, so I can highly recommend it if you are into that kind of historical fiction. And yeah, like I said, my Margaret Cavendish gush, I think she was an extraordinary woman who was all but forgotten until, you know, the, the feminist uh, theorists in, in the 20th century rediscovered her, but she is absolutely worth um, yeah, exploring if you are interested. I will leave a link to a fantastic biography by Kate Whitaker in the description box um, and also to a book of her own writing, The Blazing World, because Margaret Cavendish also wrote science fiction, an utopian uh, science fiction novel called The Blazing World, which I reread um, after having finished um, uh, Margaret the first and the other book sort of yeah that has sort of something to do with Margaret Cavendish I reread was Siri Hustvedt The Blazing World. Uh, Siri Hustvedt is also um, a big fan of Margaret Cavendish. Uh, she wrote about her in, in essays and gave talks um, and The Blazing World um, is a novel about another female artist called Harriet in the 20th century. So it's a modern novel. And we experience the, the problems Harriet has as an artist. She thinks that because she is a woman, she is not recognized as an artist. So, so what she does is she picks three men as fronts, as masks, who show Harriet's work for her in order to see what the reaction will be. The Blazing World, Siri Hustvedt's Blazing World, is not an easy book. It is um, structured as um, 
a posthumous account of Harriet's life. So the first thing we get is a, a fake publisher's note because uh, the publisher collected um, uh, Harriet's writing, her notebooks, but he also conducted interviews after Harriet's death with her uh, former lover, with her daughter, um, with uh, art critics, with some two of Margaret's masks, so the two men who showed the work for her. And so we get all these different points of views of Harriet from all kinds of people, some favorable, some non-favorable. And you know that I sometimes say, well, all these different point of view, uh, I'm, I'm fed up with it. But in this book, it really serves a purpose because it, it uh, Siri Hustvedt, I think, wanted to show us um, the the power and the problem of perception, how we perceive other people, uh, what we call the truth about other people. So the reader um, has to make up his or her own mind about what really happened with Harriet and the three men she uses as masks. So I, I loved uh, The Blazing World by Siri Hustvedt. I can certainly recommend it. And it... it this and my reread of uh, Margaret Cavendish's own work sort of concluded my Margaret Cavendish week, the first and foremost Margaret Cavendish. But I stayed reading wise with Extraordinary Women, but the next book is about a woman extraordinary, but in a very, very different way, and that is Michael Zierfogel's debut novel Magda about Magda Goebbels, the wife of the infamous Goebbels in the Third Reich. The book was published in 2013 and I came across this book and um, uh, the, the writer, Mike Seerfogel, um, watching Simon over at Savage Reads gush about Magda. So thank you, Simon, for pointing me in the right direction. First about the author, Maike Ziervogel, as you might gather from the name, um, was born in Germany, in, in Kiel, that's in northern Germany, in 1967. And she moved to London in the mid-80s to study and has been living in London ever since. So she publishes in English. Um, she also founded uh, an independent press. I will leave a link to the um, publishing house down below, which focuses on contemporary uh, fiction in English translation. And the, the publishing house and Michael Seerfogel also run a literary salon in uh, London since 2009. Uh, with regular events um, about books and conversations and dinner, as the website says. I would, the link is down in the description box. Um, so the book Magda is also historical fiction. It's also quite slim. Um, and it's, like I said, about Magda Goebbels. It explores mainly the... Uh, in, in Ziervogel's view, a toxic relationship between mother and daughter. So we have Magda herself uh, and Magda's mother and Magda's eldest daughter. Um, it's a very difficult subject, I think. First of all, because Magda Goebbels is well known as a historical picture, but m mostly because of uh, the atrocities of the Third Reich and the yeah, the blame that is obviously uh, attributed to, to, to Goebbels himself and Magda, who was a fervent um, uh, national socialist. So it, it, it's, it, I think it's, it, it's uh, not an easy subject uh, to write about, but Ziervogel did a, a superb job, I thought. Um, she was able to capture her view on, on Magda's life, uh, like I said, focusing on the relationship between mother and, and daughter. So if you are not afraid to tackle uh, a historical figure like that, like Magda Goebbels, I can certainly highly recommend the book. Um, Michael Ziervogel uh, has published, um, I think, three more books now, or what, no, the, I think her fourth novel is, is upcoming in, in May of this year, and all her novels focus 
on family dynamics and especially the relationship between mothers and daughters. So if you have not heard of her, like I haven't, uh, she definitely might be worth looking into. And the last book is the book that I've started this weekend and that is Heidi Julewitz's The Folded Clock, a Diary, published in 2015. Um, Heidi Julewitz is, uh, was born in 1968 in Maine. She's an American writer. She also in 2003 co-founded the literary magazine The Believer. I will leave a link to the magazine down below. It's a bi-monthly um, magazine with reviews, essays, interviews, um, all about books and writers and such. Um, uh, the folded clock, uh, from what I understood, I, I have, have only read the first couple of pages, but it's um, a very personal account. It's more of a memoir when uh, Julewitz rediscovered a diary she wrote when she was uh, a young girl and she looked at what she wrote and she tried uh, to yeah, rediscover that person uh, by starting to write a diary again now in her mid 40s so i'm really uh looking forward to this i i, I love her writing especially uh, the pieces she writes for the believer so i'm yeah i'm excited uh, to get on with uh, the folded clock so this was it for this sunday's books weekly uh, thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it i'm looking forward to talking to you in the comments as always and I will you all see you all next time. Bye bye.